Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Hey everybody, well guess what? I'm joining you from a completely different part of the world. I've now moved to Heidelberg. What do you think about that? Wow, wow, what a change. But I wanted to keep up my lovely live streams with all of you. Sorry for the long break, but here we are together and we're gonna be doing some drawing together, of course, as always. Hey, Tim, guten tag, very nice of you to say so. Frank, what's up? Nice to see you as well. Steve and Afroha and Peter. And who else is here? I see um, Marie. Hey, Marie, nice to see you. Um, RB is here joining us as well. What's up? And Cody, of course. Janine, hello. Als der Schweiz. Is it Schweiz? Are you from Switzerland? Oh, my German is so bad, y'all. Holy cow, I got to work on it. Clarissa, how's it going? Everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Um, now, I had some issues trying to set up the audio for this stream. Please let me know if the audio is sounding weird, okay? Because I just couldn't figure it out. I'm using a, a different streaming platform than I usually do. Um, it's just all over the place trying to set up my home office from scratch. So bear with me. I really appreciate you uh, being here and hanging out. Today we're gonna draw some dogs, some doggies. You can see that over there um, on the left of your screen. Got a cute little dog. Took me about two minutes to draw this dog using custom brushes. And this is the great thing about Custom brushes, I, I'm always talking about brushes, but they just make your job so much more fun, so much more interesting and creative because of the marks that you make, right? Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, we're gonna just look at some common breeds, but what I'd really love from all of you is if you could maybe, please, uh, put in a couple of names of breeds of dogs in the chat, and I'll feed off that and I'll do some drawing based on your suggestions. So what do you think about that? That'd be great. I've already got a Greyhound ready to go here on the screen. Um, and that's going to be my starting point. But I would love, love, love if you could give me some suggestions. And uh, we'll see how many we can do today. Taking full advantage of brushes. Okay, my favorite thing ever. I'm always talking about brushes. Kyle, enough with your brushes. I know that's what you're saying. All right. So here we go, let's get to some drawing. I've got Photoshop open here, we're ready to go. I see that people are saying that uh, the audio is fine, so that makes me really, really happy. Um, and uh, I also see that we're getting already some fantastic ideas for some breeds of dogs. We've got a sheepdog, a dachshund, <gasps> very nice. What's up, Brianna, thanks for joining us, hello, hello. A St. Bernard, a Husky, these are great. Marie says, a quiche hound, quiche hound. I'm not even sure what that is. I have to look that up. A boxer, says Peter. Uh, great one, great one. I love it. Excellent. Um, so many good ideas. Okay, so here we have a little greyhound. We'll start with a greyhound, okay? And let's go ahead and we'll reduce the size of this greyhound. It's just going to be our little reference photo, okay? And I can use my rectangular marquee tool to select that greyhound and then go ahead and command shift I to invert that selection and delete the excess because we don't really need it there, do we? Alrighty, and we'll hide our uh, other business here. We're just gonna get rid of that stuff and create ourselves a nice little background layer using nothing fancy, just white to draw from. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the shape of this greyhound and let's think about what this really makes us think about. And for me, it's long and lean, long and lean, smooth and slick. I think about things like that and I think, well, you know, it's not like this is a shaggy dog. It's not like this is a really super fuzzy dog, okay? So how would I want to draw this? I start to think about lines, okay? I'm thinking about lines and maybe I want to work with either brushes that give me a lot of line control, okay? Or maybe I actually just want to go for it and make some selections and then paint inside those selections. You know I love to do that and it's a technique that I show you all very frequently and I think it could work nicely for a greyhound. Hope you agree. So let's take a look at those two approaches and see how we go. So when you wanna do some kind of line work and you wanna do it nice and smooth, you can look in for inking brushes and you're gonna find those in multiple places. And like I always say, if you're trying to look for brushes, do not just open Photoshop and look at the default brushes. And when you see my name in there, go, cool, I've got the Kyle brushes. No, 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 you don't. You have a very teeny tiny tip of the iceberg selection of a few brushes that, by the way, were not even selected by yours truly. I did not select these. Sure, they came from a library of brushes I made a long time ago, but these were not my decisions. No, folks, there are over 2,000 brushes that you can download that will give you so many amazing effects, and I know you want those. Here's what you do. Go to your brushes menu, okay, and 
bada bada bum right here. See this little hamburger menu? Why do we call it that? I don't know. It's a little four stacked lines. Tap on that and check it out. Get more brushes. Now what happens when I launch get more brushes? Well, my browser is going to take me to ba -ba 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 -bum. Whoops. A thousand brushes, infinite creativity, exclusive brush, uh, exclusive brushes from Kyle T. Webster. I know that guy. Look, new release, summer brushes. Yes, those came out a couple of months ago and they're lots of fun. But guess what? Next week, if you're in the United States, you're going to get a nice treat. You're going to get the fall 2023 brushes. And then for the rest of you out there in the world, two weeks later, they'll be in your area as well. But there's a cool cheat I can show you right now. Want to grab all the brushes first, early, early? Scroll on down to the bottom, and you'll see here the option to change your region. Well, guess what? If you change that region to North America, or United States, I think it is. Let's see. Uh, where is it? Uh, Americas. Here we go. United States. Kablamo. If you select that, guess what? Most of the time, you can download the latest and greatest brush set before it has made it to your region. So you can do that if you like. Okay, there's your big cool cheat for the day. All right, so let's get to some drawing. All right, I wanna do some line work, so I'm gonna go into the trusty Mega Pack. You can download that from that same brush page. And let's go inside the ink box and see what kind of stuff we have. All kinds of things. Now, remember I said I'm thinking about smooth and fluid, okay? So one of the lines that I would think of would be, um, let's see, maybe something like brush beauty. Look at this when I draw with it. Ooh, yes, smooth and lovely. And speaking of smooth, very important word, when you're drawing in Photoshop, we give you an assist an assist, okay? Imagine someone's holding your hand while you're drawing and keeping it so that it's a little more steady as you draw, especially those of you who are coming from working in a traditional medium, and all of a sudden you're drawing with plastic on glass, and it's kind of a difficult uh, adjustment, okay? Well, guess what? Come over here to where it says smoothing up at the top of the screen there. See that? Smoothing. I've got my brush set, and I go to smoothing, and I tap on that, and I can increase this smoothing. Okay, now by increasing that, I've got it set to 25% right now. When I draw my lines, I will feel more control over each and every curve. And this is a really fantastic thing. You'll notice it right away and you will enjoy that. So let's try drawing a Greyhound. I look at this Greyhound and I go, okay, well first, I wanna be you know, more photorealistic. I would really try and figure out uh, these kinds of shapes. And I'd be like, all right, this is kind of a basic shape. It's got a nice long neck. Right? See that curve in the back? Zroop, like so. Dips down in the end, and I know that tail comes down about there. You can see the tail here, okay? Tucked between the legs, but in this case, I kind of want the tail to have its own thing going on out the back there. Really super skinny, and I can exaggerate this. See that? S curve, S curve, S curve, right? Now we're starting to get somewhere with, with really interesting simplification, okay, and trying to find the language that we're using here, right? It's really a lot of curvilinear goodness, alrighty? And some nice pointy bits. See that? Zing, zing, there we go. Curving on down. And you know they've got pretty long legs, so I see that shape, and I just wanna, right there, I'm gonna get rid of that S curve, and I'm gonna use a more angular approach right there. And that's nice because it's complementing. It's sort of like you have this contrast complement from one side of the leg, curve, a cube, a curve, a cube, a curve, a cube, okay? And on this side we go curve, whoops, straight, flat, sharp, angle. And that's a nice little contrast. And then, bing, there's that little foot, okay? And then we suggest the other one out there. Alrighty, no worries. And then over here, look, nice, straight, and there's that little foot. And once you've got this sort of figured out, okay, you can look at that and you can start to then, from there, push this language, all right? So I wanna flatten that head out a little bit, like that. Get a bit more narrow there. 
in the front. But with regards to pushing this language, right, slide this over here for a minute. Now that I sort of understand what it is I want, I can do a couple of things. I can draw inside of the selection, like I said, and to do that, what I could easily do is come over here to where I've just done my sketch and over the top of it, make a selection. Okay, I can do this in, in bits and pieces, right? Hold down my shift key to add to my selection and just do one nice long curve and a curve and woo. All right, that might be difficult to see. I'm just gonna move this over this way so you can see my selection. See that? See what I'm doing? I'm adding to and creating this selection right over the top of my sketch, right? The sketch is really just there as a guide, making decisions as I go, holding down the shift key, because that's making it possible for me to add to my selection, okay? And then for this long leg here, I'm just gonna go down, maybe stretch it even longer. And again. Alrighty. And then here I'm gonna add to this. Come on down, I'm looking at how long I made the leg in the back there. And then add another one right there. And let's go ahead and throw that tail out the back, but see I'm gonna go a little longer than I did before. Okay, now let's move this over here and take a look at that silhouette, all right? Look at that, what do you think about that? That's a pretty nice silhouette. And I can separate these two legs out here in the front. I'm gonna hold down the Option key. Now if you're on a PC, hold down Alt, okay? And I'm just gonna create a little gap right there. Isn't that nice? Nice to kind of break that up, make sure we don't have too chunky a shape right there for now. Okay, I can always go in and I can change my mind and edit all this later. But there is my shape. All right, now that's great. Here's one of the wonderful things you can do. Look at this pattern of the fur on the Greyhound. Okay, now what would you wanna to do to create that with brushes? Let me show you a couple things. First thing I wanna do is fill this entire silhouette in with color. And then what I'm gonna do is use either clipping masks to paint over it, or I'm going to use lock layer transparency. Now one is less destructive than the other. If you know which one it is, put it in the chat and we shall see who knows their stuff out there. I know a lot of you know a lot of things. Peter says, what brush is he using? Um, to draw that, I used a uh, brush beauty, it's called. It's in the Mega Pack ink box to answer that question for you. All right. Who let the dog out, says Alessandra. I did, yes, that's right, Kyle let it out. Got all kinds of good breeds in here. Oh my gosh, I've got so much to choose from. So we're gonna hit one of those next. All right, but let's go ahead back to our drawing here. And let's first fill this in solid with color. Could be any color, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna hit Option, Delete, okay? ba bump ba bump on my, um, on my keyboard here so I can fill this with color. There we go. And then I'm gonna deselect. Now, once I've gone ahead and done that, I've got my silhouette. Okay, now I can start playing with color and doing whatever I want. All right, so first things first, I'm going to use a clipping mask. So I'm going to create a layer above, all right, this layer here. I'm gonna hold down the Option key, all right? And right here, in between the two layers, if I hover there, I see a little box showing up. And if I tap, it automatically turns that layer into a clipping mask layer. And this is great because now, now, we can even base this on our observations here for what we're seeing for the coloration of this particular dog. We can go really, really light, all right? And then we can start to play around with brushes. So I just wanna fill this in and I'm going to jump out to one of the seasonal brush sets. Let's go for the spring 2022 brush set. There are lots of good, textural, interesting brushes in here, all right? And you'll find some and really enjoy them, I know you will. I think I'd like to try, for example, maybe the Chef Maltese to start with. And I'll just paint inside here like that. And you'll see that this brush, if I zoom in, creates all this lovely activity, all right, without me even having to try. Don't even have to try. And you'll notice also that by painting here, because it's locking itself to the shape of the layer underneath, 
we're in good shape. I don't even have to stay inside the lines, so to speak. Now to make this easier to see, I'm just gonna change my background color for you, all right? And we'll go ahead and knock that in. There we go. May even wanna go a little darker, that's nice. All right, so you can see that very clearly. It's kind of a medium uh, value, heading towards about 35%, if you wanna think about darks and lights, 35% black, okay? So there, we are starting with a base color. Now the great thing about clipping masks is I can just keep adding clipping masks, okay? So I can come back here to this layer that has the shape of the dog. I can add another layer, and you notice that the moment I add it, look, it automatically makes it a clipping mask layer. And I can take that layer and slide it on up above the layer that I just painted, and now we can go for a darker color here, all right? So we're gonna go back to warm colors here. And I'm just going to come in about here and select this nice dark color right here. And now looking at what I have with that pattern, I can go back to using my selection tool if I want. This is really fun. Now, there are lots of ways to do this. I might choose not to use a selection tool, but for parts of it, I might want a hard edge. For parts, I might want a soft edge for this shape. But here I can just design a pattern based on what I'm seeing Okay, right there, and that goes right down into the arm, and then crosses back over, and then back down this arm, and back over, and then up, like so. All right, very nice. And I can continue adding to this selection with these shapes here. There's one kind of like that. That's kind of nice. And then run out the back there, and then maybe part of the tail. And of course, you could change this up and do whatever you like, all right? But now I'm gonna switch it up and use a different brush. Now we have so many cool textural brushes here, just in this one set, all right? And I think what I'd like to try is maybe this, uh, maybe this Woodchop Joey, that might work. Woodchop Joey in action. And I'll just paint over it like this. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. And you see what I mean about there being a hard edge shape everywhere on the dog. And that could work just fine because of the, the way this dog is, um, you know, so sleek. We're really taking that language and we're pushing it, making everything sleek and hard edge and all that. But what I can also do is I can deselect for a moment and using this same brush, I can see what happens if I just take the edges here, here and there, and using light pressure, see what's happening there? Light pressure, it's not gonna be as opaque. So I can have little parts of it just kind of fade into the white a bit more. And I'm, I'm drawing kind of in a downward motion because if you notice the pattern on the dog, okay, it does have sort of a movement right there, vertical movement there, and then a little bit more sort of following the form right there of the anatomy, right? But what's great now is I can also come in here and select this color, go a little lighter, right? A little lighter and then maybe use another brush that doesn't have quite so much action there. I can just paint across. And let me here, one second, I'll show you something. Um, since I have this layer here ready to go, I can take that layer itself and I can lock its layer transparency, okay? Which means when I paint over it like so, it's only going to affect the pixels that are there. So this is the Bruno brush. Now watch, see this? Look how beautiful that is. Look what it's doing there. See that? Really nice stuff. Now if I unlock that layer transparency and go back to the brush I was using a moment ago, which is that um, Woodchop Joey brush, okay? And I come over here again and I just sort of soften some of these a little bit, right? When you lock layer transparency, you're also locking the opacity settings uh, for whatever you've painted in that layer, which means if you have something that's like 25, 30% opaque, right, you can still paint into that and get some really good results. Okay, just kind of painting around, softening some edges here and there. I think that really makes this have a bit of a cooler personality, like so. Then lock that layer transparency again. Go back to that, uh, go back to that um, Bruno brush right there, okay, Grab that lighter color, hit it again, hit it again, hit it again. Go to the darker color, maybe even a little bit darker. 
do a couple of streaks with that as you go through. And you can really do some pretty remarkable stuff right there. See how easy that is? And see how fun that is to design inside of the shape. Now to separate that leg, you notice it's got a slightly pinker color on the inside there of the leg. And all I have to do is come back here and again, make another clipping mask layer, just boom. Ha Oops, let's go back here. Come back to the layer with the dog, add a layer that's automatically going to clip it, okay? Pop it up to the top there. And then just come here and make my selection like so. Grab this color, push it a little more saturated, a little darker. Okay, it's already in the right vicinity in terms of color, all right? And then I can just grab that Woodchop Joey, size it down a hair, and we just do this. We just paint inside there, use a little less pressure as we head on down. And that just separates that leg out, no problemo, okay? Let's take a look at the face, right? All I wanna do is add a little bit of a shadow underneath, right here, under the head there. So I'm just gonna select that area. Same brush, I'm using that Woodchop Joey, come in here. Push it a little darker, push it a little cooler maybe, okay? Come in here and just hit that like so. Go a little darker, right up against the edge. So we definitely separate out that head. See that? That's pretty fun, right? If you wanna use that same technique for this back leg, you can just throw it on there and see how that works. See if that works for you. All right, do the same maybe with the leg that's behind this leg here, if you want to just hit it towards the bottom there, like that, you can do that as well. All right. And then look, all we've got left is our little snout, and we can sculpt this. Check it out. What I love is because these are clipped to this layer here, if I come in and I go ahead and I change the shape of my original layer, everything above it is going to conform. See that? That's the beauty of clipping masks. So cool, right? Um, this really gives me a lot of a lot of freedom to get super picky with that shape, right? I'm looking at the shape of that that snout there, and I'm kind of refining it here. Really like to get that feeling even better. All right, and I can see that that ear kind of does that, right? You can get, just get a bit more accurate there, right? You can see it's kind of folding over itself. You can even add to it, bloop, like that. And go ahead and select that color, just throw it in there. Now everything's cool. And for the eyes, you know, why not just go super simple? I've, in the same brush set, I've got so many options. One of them is these suave inkers. Right, we're talking about smooth inking just a moment ago. Um, you can just hit it with this. Come over here, make a new layer. And then I look at my reference right there. Grab that and we'll just pull that over here. Just so it's a little closer. You can see it more clearly. Come over here and I draw that. Like that, perfect. I like that. And then just a simple solid shape for the nose right there. Okay. And that's pretty much all we need to get that Greyhound feeling Greyhoundy. Okay. I can use that same brush if I want just to sort of suggest what's happening with that ear right there and the other ear as well. And there we have a pretty decent Greyhound. So let's go ahead and take all those layers and just group them together, Command-G, all right? And we can move that around. Um, sketch is part of that. I can just go ahead and hide that sketch. Don't need it anymore. Bum, bum. Ding, oops. Goodbye. All righty, so there you go. So that's numero uno, what do you think? Hope that was helpful. We did a couple of different things there. We painted inside shapes, right? We did some soft edge, some hard edge stuff. We used some clipping masks, really fun. Okay, back to our list. Let's see what everyone's thrown in there. What's up, Umicorn? Nice to see ya. 
Hey everybody, so glad you're here. Um, all my old pals, Emily, what's up? Nice to see you. It's hot in Texas, is it? Oh boy, sorry about that. My my brother just moved to Texas um, from Dubai of all places. That's crazy. All right, uh, let's see. We have so many choices. Hound of the Baskervilles, says Steve. You know I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. Chihuahua, very fun. Golden Retriever, Husky. I want to try and find something that has a bit of a different texture to it. A sheepdog. Let's go for the sheepdog. Let's see. I want to go and do some photo hunting here and check out what a sheepdog looks like. And I want to see how to draw a sheepdog. Wow, now we're talking. Okay, so this is really going to be a completely different exercise, and I like that. This is a good thing for everybody to try. Try something different, something new, okay? So let's go ahead and let's bring this sheepdog over here. All right, now looking at a sheepdog, wow, very different, right? That's a different exercise. All right, so now what we're dealing with is a lot of shagginess, okay? A lot of puffiness, a lot of softness. Not, these are not hard edge shapes, are they? So what do we wanna do? If we wanna do that, we want to use different brushes. That's the key. That's the secret. And that's what this show is all about. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and let's look for some softer, softer options. All right, now in the same brush set, okay, you have all kinds of cool things. And you sometimes can use hard edge brushes to do softer effects. For example, you have this Geobot brush. See that? And that does some really interesting stuff. Now, if I go ahead and use a light color, okay, and I reduce the size of that brush, I could get pretty creative with it and just do a sort of rough shape for this dog. Reduce the size of the brush even further to get out towards the edges and sort of control a bit more, all right, like so. And I'm using really light pressure here along the edges with this brush. All right. And then fill in a bit more here in the center. But here is this big puffy shape. And again, I can take this and I can use clipping masks if I want, or I can just be bold and just lock the layer transparency and start painting on this, right? But you see, this is a hard edge brush. Let me zoom in for you if you can see that. But the way it's overlaying the shapes on top of one another all over the place gives it a softer appearance along the edge, okay? And you can really get creative with this kind of stuff and use brushes you normally wouldn't think to use for certain purposes, all right? Um, just sampling color, for example, from the dog himself and then locking that layer transparency and hitting some of this right there, okay? And then sampling a little bit of color here, give them a little, little shadow, like so. I'm just looking at these, these shadow shapes, these dark shapes, and kind of trying to figure out what I'm doing with that. Go back to that really dark shape. Go really small with the brush. Just suggest a nose. Go even smaller. Suggest that we have the eyes there. Go ahead and hold down your, um, your tilde key if you're in the States and you can erase um, with your brush. I don't know if everyone knows that trick, but holding down the tilde key uh, erases with your brush. And this is something you can do with a North American keyboard, okay? If you don't have a North American keyboard, you can use the clear mode uh, for your brush. And the way you do that is you go up to the brush modes, okay, up here, and you have modes right here, you go to clear, and that'll turn your brush into an eraser, pretty fun. Pretty neat little trick there. Now I'm just kind of refining it, I'm just kind of working with it like this. And you can see already, this is just a really fun way 
to draw. And you don't, you know, you don't really have a lot of control, and that's part of the fun. It's just however it however it turns out, right? You're just suggesting something. It's not going to be a hundred percent. Maybe every line exactly where you meant to place it, uh, but that's fine. You're going to be fine. You know, I can just keep sampling and going back and forth until I get things roughly where I want them. I'm using my option key a lot. Sampling color from what's there on the canvas, painting next to it, changing that up again. I do this a lot. And this is something you want to get used to when you're painting is using that option key. It's your best friend because you're constantly going to be sampling color when you refine stuff. Okay, going back and forth and back and forth trying to arrive at just the right combo of shapes. Not to contradict myself, when I say just the right, I don't mean it has to be perfect. We're not looking for perfection here. Not at all, no sir. That's not what we're trying to do. But we do have this moment sometimes where you go, aha, that's kind of it. And you stop and say, okay, I got that. Feels good, feels resolved. I'll move on now to something else, okay? So, hope you're, you're getting the idea here for how you can use a completely unexpected brush for something like this, okay? And the result is going to be super weird. I mean, look, look at that. All kinds of little triangles and things like that, right? This is not what we would normally probably do to create this image. but it's fun. All right, so that's one way to do it. Now, what about using some soft edge brushes? This is probably more, you know, what we would expect to do to get something like this to work out. Um, well, if you want to do that, you have lots and lots of options. I would say you want to maybe try some of the impressionist brushes. You want to maybe try something that's got a softer edge to it from, from the uh, oil painting category, you know, from the paint box and the mega pack maybe, or maybe there are some other options that you could try uh, from these seasonal brush updates. And we can look through some of those right now. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so there's one little sheepdog. Slide him on over. There, we'll resize him down. We'll make some room for all of our friends here. We'll get this guy down here. And uh, we'll take this guy, we'll slide him over here. Take our greyhound, which is in a group. And we'll go ahead and we'll um, Make him a little smaller. Let's pop him up there. There we go. All right, now let's go look at some softer brushes. And just for just for fun, I'm going to switch it up to a poodle because you know that's a completely different kind of soft edge kind of dog. All right, but we're going to play with that for a second. Let's just try that. Poodle. Wow, funny. There's so many. What a funny looking dog. Sorry, no offense, poodles but you look crazy. Wow. This is so perfect. All right, here we go. Check this out, gang. Let's take a look at this. That is one crazy dog. Anybody out there a poodle owner? We had a poodle when I was um, 13 and 14. And honestly, it was a pretty terrible dog. I'm just being honest. All right, let's take a look at that poodle. And we're still, now we're talking about soft edge brushes. Okay, we're gonna hide our friend here for just a moment. And we're gonna concentrate on this and we're going to use soft brushes. Let's go look for some soft brushes here. Now in this set, for example, I look at the brush stamp preview and see if I find anything. I say, oh, does that have sort of a softer edge to it? And then I try it out and see how it feels. So this one's called Old Blue. Now as I paint with it, look at that. Definitely a softer feel all the way around. See that? Softy, softy, softy. Fantastic. Okay. And that could work very, very nicely. And I could also control the shape quite nicely with that. But I was thinking about a brush from way back in spring of, I want to say 2020. And there it is. Spring 2020 had these bouquet brushes or bouquet, bouquet, bouquet. Um, uh, Peter says the poodle has come a long way from his wolf ancestors. Indeed. 
Is this a rough draft, says Tessa. Ha ha, I love it. Thank you. You know I love the dad jokes. That's awesome. Good one, good one. All right. Um, check out these bouquet, bouquet brushes. I just want to show you what these look like when I paint with them. See that? Come on. It's almost custom made for a poodle, right? Now, if I size that brush down and paint with it, look what I can do. Isn't that fun? So I may not have total control, but I could say, all right, well, here's a poof ball, right? And that could be this area, for example, right? And I could maybe add to that poof ball up here and say, there's another poof ball, you know, poof, poof. Then I could size it down a bit and throw one over here and say, there's that sort of that back poof ball. There's that tail, okay? And then we have one down here in the leg and another one in the leg. And then up front, we've got these two, right? And what's really fun is you can just really exaggerate stuff. So I could take this entire area here and just shrink it down like so. And um, add to puffiness here. Then use my lasso tool, grab uh, these areas for the, the feet and just stretch them on down like that. And maybe pull them over like that. And then this is where you can have some fun. You could draw some, okay? Maybe we wanna use something like some pastels. So go into the mega pack and go into the drawing box and scroll all the way down until you find some oil pastels. See these right here? All right, and I'll just add a layer. We're gonna use a nice gray color. And this is what the oil pastels do. If I grab another color and, and draw into it, see that? Picks up some of that color and mixes it like oil pastels do. And that to me is really fun. So um, I could work on the same layer just to play. I think I'll try that for a moment here. Size that brush down. Um, and let's see what happens. Now this is, this is what I like, is I can take the distance here and stretch it. So I give this poodle, uh, whoops, longer, even longer legs. And as I paint over that white, it picks up some of the white, blends it a little bit right there. Right there, see that? It's like it it loses its power when it gets overlapping with the white because the white dominates. Okay, I can even pick up some of that white and, and draw with it using the same brush. And as long as I use light pressure, I can sort of blend it all together. That's really nice, I like that. Same here, blend and blend and blend. All right, and then at the bottom here, you've got these little feet and I can just make them super tiny. Okay, this is again that whole idea of just exaggerating stuff, okay? And then out the back here too, same idea, right? It's going a little lighter here. And then simplifying that whole shape down like that. Beautiful. See how nice that is? And then instead of going darker in the back, I could even decide to go lighter. You, you, you can sometimes, if you want, to suggest that something is further away, you know, it doesn't always make sense to go dark. In fact, most of the time it makes sense for it to go lighter because of the atmosphere that's there, okay? The atmosphere is pushing that back. If I grab some of that green and paint over it, see that? It's just kind of pushing it back in space. So sometimes, you know, it makes more sense for sure to go lighter rather than to go darker, okay? Let the atmosphere do its thing. I could do the same thing with this leg here, just lighten that up a little bit right there. And I'm using my option key just to smudge along the end by grabbing some of that, that green from the background. That's really fun to do. I'll use the same dark color here as I come down the leg. So we feel that it's the same, right? 
and then we're using that same color again right here one little foot there one little foot there okay um, now so for this area up here where we got the head notice there's a little bit kind of coloration there from the body it's the neck right under that right under that um, head of the dog there grab some white blend 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 okay and then I can switch it up to another pastel brush like the pastella okay and shrink that down a little bit and draw with it all right and here we're just going to use a nice dark color from the leg and we can do a little nose boop, and one eye and another eye all right and then That feels good, that feels good. And what's great about a brush like this is it's going to pick up the same sort of textural feel as the oil pastel, but it's not a mixer brush, so it's not gonna blend anything. So it gives you more control when you're drawing. Okie dokie. And that feels great. Let's go right here to a perfect pencil to refine the shape of the eye there and there. Maybe get the edge of that nose a bit, a bit more accurate. Go a little darker there under the chin just to define that. There you go. And now we have this, this whole big shape here, which is really specific. And I'll go ahead and use this brush again. Okay, this is a bouquet brush. I'm just gonna size it down. Now, when I, when I have brushes that are less predictable, if I make them smaller, okay, all the scattering and crazy stuff that happens with them, right? Well, it's obviously turned down. The distance that it covers is not gonna be the same. So then I can do stuff, like still get that cool edge quality when I draw with them, but I can also control things a bit more, okay? And get more specific. I don't want to lose some of the happy accident goodness that I get with it, right? I just want to make sure that I can also have a bit of control and do something like that. And then use light pressure over there to soften that whole area. Okay. Ooh, so fun. I hope some of you when you watch these streams, I hope some of you are able to draw along a little bit. I know it's hard to, you know, draw, watch, draw, watch, etc. Um, but if you ever have the chance to just do even a little bit of drawing with me, uh, I think you'll you'll feel like that's a beneficial thing. I hope so. Alrighty. Let's go back to our list and see what else you all suggested, okay? Because I know you've got some good ideas in there. Um, and that feels good for our poodle. We'll go ahead and hide our photo reference and uh, we'll take our poodle and slide him over there. And maybe make the poodle a little smaller. There. All right, now just a quick note before we move on to one more dog. Um, in doing all these exercises, I want you to know that the next step here is to go from copying from the, the photo, and you can see that these already have a lot of personality. Compared to the photo, they are different, right? Um, but they're still based on it. And remember what we did with the Greyhound, we we're trying to find a shape language and trying to find a sort of way to describe what it is we're seeing with a certain kind of vocabulary, visual vocabulary. So if I look at something like this, this poodle, now I could say, okay, that's my starting point. That's my first drawing. But, you know, I could really now just go nuts with, for example, the graphite control brush, grab some white, and just do that. Okay. And then do that. And then that, and then that, you know, like, 
just be overly, overly simple with my shape language. Okay, something like that. And then just grab, um, you know, graphite stick or Conte crayon or something and uh, say, okay. I'm gonna do this. Right? And it's perfectly fine to simplify everything down to that and say, cool, got it, you know? Um, so you're really just taking what you've learned about the general shapes of the dog, the textures of the dog, whatever, and then making a sort of cartoonified version of it. Okay, so try stuff like that. All right, so we got, let's see, one more. Let's see what we have here. So far, Clues says, my dogs look like a horse bear and a ball of puff. Hey, good enough. That works fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, you always go back and draw with the recording, says Emily. Cool. I like that. That's great. That's great. That's great. Um, Steve sent a link. There was a poodle dog sled team. Unreal. I can't believe it. All right. So let's go back here. Um, going up towards the top of the chat here. So we see sheepdog. Yeah, we did that. Okay. 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 Um, I think I saw like a... What was it called? Um, oh, what's that? Golden Retriever, a Husky. Huskies are kind of wolf-like, right? Let's check out Husky, come on, here we go. Husky time. All right, we have, oh yeah, I love the way Huskies look. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I'd know some, I felt like I knew somebody about a Husky when I was a kid. I'm sure I, I'm sure I knew someone about a husky. Um, cool dog, cool faces on those dogs. And definitely a soft, a soft set of shapes to work with there. Um, there's some patterning there that makes it really interesting to, to draw this dog, kind of dog here. So I'd like to get the face uh, towards us with a dog like this, with a husky. I think that makes a big difference. Um, Here's one where the dog is facing forward. I'm trying to find one that has the whole body. I mean, it's harder than you'd think. They real I really like patterning. This is really pretty. Okay, I'll go ahead and try this one. And uh, let's see what you all think here. All right, it's asking me if I want to accept all cookies, blah, blah, blah. All right, copy image, and here we go. This is for educational purposes, we're fine. Let's go ahead and shrink that down. Oops, what'd I do? Um, yeah, we'll shrink this guy down so I can see him over here. And we've got some really interesting patterning to work with here. I've got about six minutes. What can I do in six minutes? Well, I can try and have some fun just drawing this from scratch um, using maybe a brush that's got some bristly action to it. So let's go ahead and use our paint box. Open that up. And look at this. We've got bristles, bristles, bristles. Bristles galore. Bristle pull sparse. Bristle fat flex. That's kind of fun. Should we just try with that? Well, let's, let's go for it. All right, so I'm going to first shrink that brush down a hair, ha, 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 and we'll use some white, and we'll just go like this. We're just gonna kind of move like this, and we're gonna make that sort of diamond shape for the face there. Yeah, that's that white bit. And if I move in the direction I want the hair to go, then all the bristles are gonna do their job. See that? 
Well, think about that. Think about if you're using a brush that's got some bristly kind of action. Think about which direction do you want it to move. Okay, see that? All right. And then we're going to go for this darker color here. And I can size the brush down. I'll even create a layer behind it and just color in all that just to get the basic silhouette. Okay, just really scoop the skinny on the side there. Boom, boom, boom. Alrighty, and get those ears. Uno y dos. Can you hear those church bells in the distance? I love that. Every day I hear, I hear that. It's really lovely. We are very happy to be here. This is a great place to live. I can't believe we're finally here. I'm trying to do this for four years. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Now what am I doing? Look, I'm scrubbing on the side. Da, 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 da. Okay, for the direction that the hair is moving. Occasionally I can just bust out completely. Zing, 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 zing. Okay. Scrubity, 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 scrub. Just fuzzing up that edge, right? Like so. If I zoom in, you'll see what you can do there. And if you use a combination of different bristly kinds of brushes, you'll get even more variation in those brush strokes, which is what you want, right? Now, coming back over the top here, I want to hit this, get a bit more specific with uh, the shape here. Around and around. It's almost like they have eyebrows like that, you know? It's really, really fun looking. Okay, now for the rest of the body, oops, I'm going to take this and just duplicate it. There we go. And um, for the body here, I'm just gonna go super simple with one color, okay? And just uh, grab, whoops, and just draw here like this. I'm gonna go almost like I'm sketching with it. See this? Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Down we go for one leg, and down we go for another leg, right? There's our body right there. And then over, ba -ba -ba -bum. and down for that nice bushy tail. And when I get around to actually drawing more specifically, um, these shapes, I'm still gonna wanna retain some of that lovely bristly kind of feel, right? If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Isn't that what those guys from Oasis said every five seconds? Not me, not me, not me, not me. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not from wherever they were from. Where, 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 are, the, where are those guys from? Not Hull. Where are they from? Manchester, I think. I was in college and everyone was like, oh man, this band is going to be the next Beatles. And that didn't happen. It was fun. All right, got two more minutes here. So let's just leave this bit as it is. It's actually kind of, I have to be honest, it's kind of cool to leave this sketchy bit like that and just have that bristly stuff kind of show through. I kind of like that. Grab the white and just paint over some of these bits. See this? And using light pressure means a little less opacity and a little more bristly action. Okay, which is kind of cool, I have to say. I'm liking the sketchy quality of this. It wasn't even what I was really originally thinking I would do, but it's working quite nicely. 
I got to have to leave it there again, but I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. Um, until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, remember to be kind, and I'm going to say ciao for now.